Hi, I'm Dr. Karen Taylor. I'm an obstetrician and gynecologist, and I'm also a proud mother to four wonderful children. As a mother and a physician, I know you are facing many important decisions at this time in your pregnancy. Today, I hope I can help you with the decision of preserving newborn stem cells from your baby's umbilical cord blood and umbilical cord tissue. Your baby's umbilical cord is made up of tissue that contains blood. Both cord blood and cord tissue are rich sources of stem cells which can be collected at birth and preserved for potential future medical uses. Cord blood and cord tissue can be easily collected immediately after your baby is born without risk or pain to you or your newborn in both C-section and vaginal deliveries. Stem cells are considered the body's master cells. This is because they have the ability to become the different types of cells that make up our organs, tissue, blood, and immune system. The stem cells from cord blood mostly become red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets. The stem cells in cord tissue can become cartilage, bone, and fat. Preserving your newborn's cord blood and cord tissue today may give your family opportunities to access stem cell treatments in the future. That's why it's important for you to be informed about the current uses and also the potential future uses of newborn stem cells so you can make an informed decision before your child's birth. Ideally, I recommend that you look into your options and make a decision in your second trimester since this will allow you time to be prepared if your baby is born before his or her due date. Today, cord blood stem cells are used in transplant medicine, where a person's own stem cells or a donor's stem cells are used to regenerate the patient's blood and immune system. Currently, stem cell transplants can be used in the treatment of more than 80 conditions, such as leukemia, lymphoma, sickle cell anemia, and some immune and metabolic disorders. Since the first cord blood transplant in 1988, there have been more than 35,000 transplants worldwide using cord blood stem cells stored in both public and family cord blood banks. Beyond the current uses of cord blood stem cells, research in the field of study called regenerative medicine is looking at using stem cells to help repair and regenerate damaged tissue to help the patient's body heal itself. Some of these studies are exploring how cord blood stem cells may play a role in regenerative medicine. Many clinical trials are underway worldwide investigating the use of cord blood as a treatment for conditions that currently have no cures, such as cerebral palsy, hearing loss, and autism. In many of these studies, the child's own cord blood is used for experimental treatment. A newborn's umbilical cord tissue is a rich source of another type of stem cell that is different from cord blood stem cells. Cord tissue stem cells may help repair and heal the body in different ways than cord blood stem cells. These cells are currently being evaluated in clinical trials as a potential treatment for heart disease, stroke, and spinal cord damage, among other conditions. This research is exciting, but it is important to note that the research is in its early phases. And currently, these clinical trials are taking place outside of the U.S. Stem cells can be collected from multiple sources in the body, such as umbilical cord blood, umbilical cord tissue, bone marrow, peripheral blood, adipose tissue, and embryonic tissue. Unlike embryonic tissue stem cells, cord tissue and cord blood stem cells are not controversial since they cannot become embryos and are simply thrown away as medical waste if not preserved. Newborn stem cells have unique qualities and advantages, and the collection process is simple, safe, and painless. Cord blood stem cells are biologically younger 
and more flexible in terms of their matching requirements compared to adult stem cells. Because of these properties, there is less risk of certain complications when cord blood stem cells are used in transplants. Preserving stem cells at birth stops the clock, protecting the cells from aging and being exposed to environmental factors and common viruses that can decrease their function. When stored, a cord blood sample is readily available when needed and minimizes delays to treatment when a patient needs an immediate transplant. If you decide to save this valuable resource, you can preserve your newborn stem cells for your family's exclusive use, or donate them to a public bank if your hospital has access to one. Otherwise, the cord blood and tissue will be discarded after delivery. I encourage you to really think about your options and preserve the cells with a family bank or donate them if possible to prevent these potentially life-saving cells from being thrown away. Donations help to increase the national supply of cord blood stem cell samples available to patients who need a transplant. Unfortunately, donation is generally possible only if your delivering hospital has a program affiliated with a public cord blood bank. If donation is an option for you, there is no cost for you to donate. Parents need to know that once the cord blood is donated, chances are small that the sample could be retrieved for use by their family if needed for treatment in the future. Another important factor to note about donating is that not all donations are actually banked. Public banks cannot keep all collected samples since this cost would be prohibitive and the screening process for the donor is more extensive than a family bank since the cells will be matched to and used by an unknown recipient and not a family member. Roughly 25% of the samples that are collected are actually banked and made available in the public registry. Also, public banks do not currently collect and store cord tissue. When you choose to preserve your newborn's cord tissue and cord blood stem cells with a family cord blood bank, your baby's stem cells are saved for exclusive use by your family. There is a fee for processing and storage, but many family banks offer payment options as a way to help fit this service into your budget. As I mentioned earlier, preserving newborn stem cells today may give your family opportunities to access stem cell treatments in the future. In many current cord blood treatments, stem cells from a family member, such as a sibling, are preferred as they do have the best chance of being a suitable match. This may be especially true for families of minorities or mixed ethnicities where a donor match may be more difficult to find on the public registry. Also, if your birth plan includes delayed cord clamping, it is still possible to collect cord blood and cord tissue. Make sure to speak to your healthcare provider ahead of time to discuss your plans. If you have a family member who is currently diagnosed with a disease that may be treated with cord blood stem cells, your family may qualify for a special program through a family or public cord blood bank. In the case of a medical need, family banks often offer free processing and storage, and some public banks will reserve the sample for your family's use. Most banks have similar qualification criteria, and I encourage you to contact the bank of your choice for further details and more information. The collection process is simple once you've made your decision to save your baby's stem cells. If you choose to enroll with a family bank, you will receive a collection kit in the mail or from your healthcare provider. Bring your collection kit to the hospital with you and give it to your labor and delivery nurse. The collection happens immediately after birth. Once the umbilical cord has been clamped and cut, the remaining blood in the cord is drawn into the collection bag. If you elect to preserve the cord tissue, a segment of the umbilical cord will also be collected. 
After the collection, your healthcare provider will give the kit back to you. You will call the medical courier listed on the kit. They will pick up the kit from your hospital room and transport it to your family bank. If you are donating your cord blood, the collection process is similar but does vary based on the hospital and storage facility. Most public banks do not have a collection kit for you to bring to the hospital with you. It is common that you will be signed up and eligibility will be determined when you are admitted for delivery. Please check with your healthcare provider or the hospital about the process. When it comes to choosing a family bank, quality and experience matter. As you research the best company for your family, ask these questions. How much experience does the bank have processing and storing newborn stem cells? How many years have they been operating? Is the company financially stable? You want to have confidence that the company will be around should you need to access the stem cells in the distant future. Are they investing in advancing the science to discover new potential uses for stem cells? Do they support clinical trials or other research? Do they offer additional resources, such as certified genetic counselors or physicians who can discuss your family's medical needs and answer your questions about how stem cells may be applicable to your family? Does the company have programs to make family banking affordable for all families? And is the company recommended by healthcare providers and other parents? I hope the information I've shared with you is helpful in making your decision about preserving newborn stem cells. If you have additional questions, I encourage you to speak to your healthcare provider or childbirth educator to learn more about cord blood and cord tissue stem cells. This is a very exciting time for you. Congratulations and enjoy it.